In uh, this video, I will be talking about how to use hill shading to extract more information from um, elevation grids in um, QGIS. So our problem is that if you have a um, a layer like this, so this is a digital service model, so we see buildings and trees and so on. If I, it can be a bit difficult to really extract all the information that is there. So there's a bit of a trick, which is called hill shading. Um, hill shading itself is just a way of symbolizing. So we can just take our layer um, and say, instead of having the symbolization, we will um, hill shade it. I'll do that in a moment. But before doing that, I'll just take a copy. So I'll just uh, duplicate this layer because I'll be needing two versions of it. So I'll say duplicate. So I've got two versions. And then I'll take my top layer here and I'll go to properties of it and symbology. And up here where we have our different values, there's one called hill shade. So the thing about hill shading is that the mind um, f can be tricked to see what's up and down by how there's shadows on the layer. And the mind normally, just for no reason, I guess, but that's probably a reason, um, think that lights come from this top left corner. And if um, shadows are applied as if that is the situation, then um, we can trick the mind to see uh, depressions and tops. But let's do like this. You can see immediately we get this lots of information because of the contrast and um and we can see what we can clearly see this is up um and we can see there's a hole there so we our mind can do this we can we can even see that there's a hole in there so our mind can use these shadow effects to see what's up and down um that's fine but now we've lost some of that um the absolute values. This is just up and down, really. If we want to combine it, if we want to change this one to um, some other colors. Black and white is not good combined with both shadows. So I want it to, to be some light douche colors. And um, there is, um, if I symbolize uh, my, this one, if I go and say properties, and say this is a great chair. So this is going to be um, a, as I said, gray, but I don't want it to be a, um, I want to have another color shade on it. So I'll use a solo color and then I'll use um, some scale. That's not what I want to do. I just want to be a drop down. So, um, and there's not really of the, any of these that is, is nice for what I want to do. Um, there is something called all color ramps. And there's some more, but still not the one I want. So the one I want, because there is a special one I want, um, is installed in QGIS, but it's not available by default. But if I go into my settings menu, go to style manager, and color ramps. We see all those color ramps we saw before. Um, I can say plus to add a new one. And where do I want? I want to go from this catalog. So there is a catalog of installed predefined color ramps. So this one, the CPT City, is a collection of um, color ramps. Um, and if I choose that, It, there's lots of different color ramps in here and I want to have one for topography and I want I um, normally like to use this uh, SD slash A here this one so if I want to use this say okay what what can I use I can use it for I'll use it for hill shade background. Okay. Um, so 
Uh, where did it go? <laughs> um, okay, I just um, thought I lost it, but it's because it was, it's not been assigned to my favorites yet. It's up on the all. So now I've got my little shaded here. Maybe I should, um, can I add it to favorite somehow? Um, so hopefully now it's a, uh, oh, well, I don't know. It's still there. So, um, I'll close it. And if I now go to my layer here and say properties on it and go down and say that I want to use my solo color. And I now use my color ramp and all, and now I have my hill shade background. So now this got this really douche, somewhat boring here, but deliberately boring. And I have my, um, oh, so now I just want to show both of them. I could do a transparency in this one. Um, so in the properties. Um, and then set its transparency um, up here. But I won't do that because that does weaken the effect somewhat. So what I want to do is I want to use this blend mode. So blend mode normally says it overwrites it, but it has one that is called multiplier, which takes the values of one and multiplies it with the other. So it strengthens the and the lying layer. If I choose this one, we can see that I now get in a relatively dark, and that was why I chose such a light um, coloring. But well, I still now have both combination of this shadow effect and of um, the colors. So the idea is that, you see, if I zoom in, you can see many of the small details um, on the buildings. So the trick is to um, use a combination of one layer that is a um, a hill shade. So this one layer up here is my hill shade, and um, one layer which is so. And I made that by going to properties and setting it to a hill shade. And um, my other layer, I have uh, chosen to do this simple as a solo color. But the trick was to use a very, very douche um, background color. And the, the one I wanted was not there. So in order to make sure I had it, I had to go to settings. And under my style manager, under color ramps, I could add one and choose it from my CPT CD. And there they had them under topography. And here there's the one I wanted. Call it something useful. And here there's the button I was looking for, add to favorite. So uh, now um, if I click this one on, it will be in my favorites. I don't want to do that because I gave it a silly name. Um, so. That's uh, basically uh, the principle of um, using hill shading to enhance the readability of, um, of both digital terrain models and digital surface models. I um, hope this one um, was useful. So, bye.